Two days ago, on April 6, 2017, President Trump gave the order for gunships, ships with guns, off the coast of Syria to fire 59 Tomahawk missiles targeting a Syrian airbase. Reality has been increasingly stranger than fiction for years now, yet even then, this event has shocked what people thought they understood of the situation so hard it sent the internet into a blaze of ridiculous hysteria. So it looks like this brony faggot needs to come out of the woodworks to settle things down with an in-depth look into the biggest initial question on everyone's mind. Why? I know why. At least, I know some possibilities as to why. Nobody has all the information yet, this event only just happened. Yet, despite this obvious fact, that didn't stop so many on the internet from acting like they've lost their head instead of using it to figure out what is going on. They're passing judgment over Trump for the prima facie level of information they have, and I've already saved all of your videos in case any of them disappear. I've also been playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I plan on doing a review for it in the future, but scrambling on the internet trying to find all the necessary information yesterday to make this video felt like playing Breath of the Wild some more. So let's get into some background. Two days before the order to missile strike, there was a Syrian chemical weapon attack committed by ISIS on Syrian people. The internet, along with Trump, immediately recognized it as a false flag attack that was pinning the blame on, ahem, democratically elected Bashar al-Assad. This is like the fifth time they've tried to do this, however. See, the New World Order is so shit at its Machiavellian executions of planning because of how utterly insane they are that they can't get fucking good enough to have more than a couple methods of attack that once you break out of the conditioning and become aware of them all, they are completely predictable and can be seen kilometers away. Oh, I'm sorry, what does this have to do with the New World Order? I'm glad you asked! The NWO is a sort of secret society of powerful people that is trying to destabilize the world to take full control over it so they can exploit it to create the technology that will enable them to make a breakaway civilization so they can become a permanent ruling class. One of the methods in which they are accomplishing this is by geoengineering, which is sending our planet's life support systems into a death spiral. Another is the spreading of Islam, or submission as it's spoken in our language but one that comes with a complete set of systematic life-controlling regulation. The pinnacle of these operations being the Islamic State known as the terrorist group ISIS, which is fomenting a crisis of migration which anyone paying attention to can see that before Trump, who has since launched a full-scale ground war to wipe out ISIS, nothing about it is being done in earnest to help people in the best way possible. Instead of fixing any problems, the approach has been to keep calm and flutter on, continuing everything we're doing right now as if it's normal or even close to fucking sane. What do I mean by that? This situation where we have a Demos whom are just living their lives, then a Kratos that has been hijacked by the New World Order influence, causing them to do all kinds of shitty things to mess up the world, such as bombing the ever-living fuck out of other countries, whom are just living their lives, usually on top of our oil. Funny how that always works. The Muslim enemy insurgent that infiltrated the United States presidential office, Obama, forming, creating, and funding free radicals in the form of Al-Qaeda, rebranded as ISIS, that then instead of rebuilding the damage done just caused more death and destruction in the land, which is a good thing, if you're looking from the perspective of the NWO Kratos, because they've somehow wormed themselves into this position, into the collective consciousness, that when they drop bombs against the Demos' wishes, they then point to the destruction they are indirectly responsible for, it's always the responsibility of the person who doesn't say no to pushing the button, as a reason for this policy of the mass migration of people, which only hurts the Demos' and strengthens the Kratos' in how they are able to divide and control the people. We are meant to pay for the crimes we did not want or commit while their blood spoils grow. For decades, more and more people have become aware of this reality, and we have only recently reached a critical mass where we are able to affect change on the political landscape, in the form of Brexit and Trump, which all this was necessary to explain so the situation surrounding this next bit becomes more clear. With all that explained, what do we see hitting the news yet again? Trump ordering more bombs being dropped on another country that resulted in casualties. This is why this sent the internet into hysteria. We thought we were breaking the conditioning for this pattern, but appears to have cropped up yet again, and everyone was left confused, as base lion Nigel Farage put it. Now I want to read to you the statement Trump gave to us, the people, about this event. My fellow Americans, on Tuesday, Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad launched a horrible chemical weapons attack on innocent civilians using a deadly nerve agent. Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women, and children. It was a slow and brutal death for so many. Even beautiful babies were cruelly murdered in this very barbaric attack. No child of God should ever suffer such horror. 
Tonight, I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attacks launched. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. There can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons, violated its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention, and ignored the warning of the UN Security Council. Years of previous attempts at changing Assad's behavior have all failed and failed very dramatically. As a result of the refugee crisis continues to deepen and the region continues to destabilize, threatening the United States and its allies. Tonight I call on all civilized nations to join us in seeking to end the slaughter and bloodshed in Syria and also to end terrorism of all kinds and all types. We ask for God's wisdom as we face the challenge of our very troubled world. We pray for the lives of the wounded and for the souls of those who have passed. And we hope that as long as America stands for justice, then peace and harmony will in the end prevail. Good night and God bless America and the entire world. Thank you. Which is funny to say it's other countries' fault we're dropping bombs on them, especially since both Russia and Syria are claiming that Trump's airstrike violates the UN Security Council. But we'll come back to that later. So that's the official narrative that we've all grown so accustomed to refuting as of late. And indeed, we have already refuted the notion that it was Assad that used chemical weapons on his people. He never has. So what is this all about? Has the Demos' champion Donald J. Trump suddenly gone off the deep end and is furthering the NWO agenda? Quite the contrary, I think, because Trump may have just de-escalated all of the global conflict tensions with this move. It might be akin to a world-saving move here. These are some of the possibilities. Specifically, the warmongering for World War III, the ultimate destabilization event the NWO threw everything behind the cunt to try to achieve. Their efforts don't end with that, they have control over much still, and have turned to the communist dictator of China to be their figurehead for global government control. Remember that funny comment by the Chinese The Globe and Mail gave in my previous video that its propaganda machine has seized on the election of Mr. Trump as proof that its people should not aspire to the failed so-called freedoms of democracy. The American political system that once was their greatest pride has constantly proven powerless to restrain the despicable conduct of incompetent politicians, writes a researcher at one of China's state-run think tanks. Mr. Trump could not have put it better himself. Did anyone question when their domestic free press started cheering on the supremacy of another nation that you should all submit to? Hmm. Except we know they're a bunch of liars who are full of shit. Western democratic countries are far from true freedom of anarchy and archons. However, they are still decikilometers ahead in terms of freedom than anything China has to offer. That's why the plan has been to take down the US for the longest time and they need another world war to do it. The cunt going to war with the nuclear power of Russia failed, so now they've turned to letting loose the mad piglet known as the dictator of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, who has been firing missiles at Japan, who are under the protection of the United States, landing off the coast of it and threatening to upgrade to nuke them and the US. Trump sent nuclear bombers to South Korea to get North Korea to stop, but they're even still firing missiles while the president of China is meeting with President Trump. Oh yeah, have I not mentioned that yet? That's kind of the pivotal point of which all this surrounds. But it's going to require further exposition still, so bear with me. So to get into the details of the event, as I said before, there have been several exposed examples of chemical weapons attacks that tried to put the blame on Assad. This is done mainly so the United Nations can have an excuse to completely remove the secular government of Syria and replace it with more Islamic theocracies that they can then build oil pipelines through the province, but that's on the aside from Trump. Remember, Trump's biggest war has always been against the fake stream media. I'm changing it from fake news, though. D doesn't that undermine... Very fake news. I yeah. know, but aren't you... <laughs> we know he knows that their reports are fake. So why did he say in that statement earlier that there can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons? Can anyone say 4D chess move? Here's what happened. Years ago, under Obama, the same scenario happened. And he struck a deal with Assad that, when evidence that Syrian forces had used chemical weapons to attack civilians emerged, the US declined to retaliate with military action, opting instead to broker a deal with the Assad regime that agreed to remove chemical weapons from Syria. That deal is one that Trump has now cashed in on with his Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, told reporters that Russia had failed to secure the country's chemical weapons as part of an agreement negotiated by President Obama in 2013 to prevent U.S. strikes, as he continues to clean up the massive swamp he inherited through the presidency. Syria has over 20 air bases, 
Trump fired 59 missiles at one air base in Homs, 23 of which hit the base destroying six fighter jets that were in repair. Crucially, the runway was left intact, though. The US warned Russia in advance of the strike, and they warned Syria, resulting in minimal casualties. Trump also warned all the nearby big players about the strike, even Saudi Arabia. You want to know who wasn't informed on this tactical strike ahead of time? China and North Korea. You want to know who set foot in front of the president inside of the United States immediately before the order to fire was given? North Korea's boss, China's president and wife and dignitaries. And that's what this is all about, Phillies and gentle Colts. The art of the deal. This was Trump saying to China, hey, pay attention. You're our guest, but take us seriously. Now let's negotiate. And that is the big secret of this event everyone has been looking for. It's not that Trump has turned to the dark side of the military industrial complex, but that he hid his real reason for making the strike from the public. One of the few things he has hid from the public view, another major one being global geoengineering. The rest of the time, Trump's government has been unprecedentedly transparent and open on its actions over the public, which is a far cry from the previous enemy insurgent administration covertly bombing civilian targets like hospitals and then trying to pin the blame on others like Russia. Now I hope there won't be anyone that needs me to explain this, but in case there is, the reasoning for why Trump did what I just said is so that his plan for negotiation could work. It wouldn't have been possible any other way at the moment. And that plan was to fool the Chinese president into feeling pressured. Because what this does is takes China's strength of position in the world stage and their asset of saber-rattling North Korea and turns them into massive liabilities. How so? North Korea is at the mercy of China. This gives Trump the image of a loose cannon to be reckoned with. And none of your little laws or power games are going to restrain him. You thought you could use your North Korea as a loose cannon to bring the US into a World War III scenario, but Trump just showed you that if you try to pull that shit with him, he won't hesitate to take out your bargaining chip. And if Trump does wipe out North Korea's nuclear capabilities, then that would negate China's biggest bargaining chip and severely set them back in the global power games on the world stage. They just got trumped on. Trump is fighting under fog of war right now to drain the swamp. The swamp that keeps manufacturing chemical attacks on people while blaming him for not stopping it to force his hand. The deep state hasn't just been actively working against Trump's government. They're trying to foment a situation where they can get away with overthrowing and assassinating him. That's the ultimate goal here. Their biggest play they had for doing so was the Trump is a Russian puppet narrative. You know the one. The Russians are hacking! The Russians are hacking! Bring in the disaster the deep state has created in Syria, and they use their establishment power with all the corporate media to spin up a narrative that this all falls on Trump, letting all this happen because he's a risky agent and needs to be taken out. This singular move serves so many purposes, some of which are utterly refuting this already refuted bullshit the NWO is trying to use to bring down Trump. Just look at the mess it's created in the intellectual spaces outside of the Trump administration. Now suddenly Trump's base really hates what's going on in those countries and wants it to stop, but at the same time can't understand why he did it. Thus, any certainty with Trump has been suspended with this action. Trump became de facto loose cannon Trump to the world for that moment in time. Now suddenly the deep state is falling heads over heels with praise for Trump for this move, condemning the innocent Assad for what they themselves did, as opposed to attacking him so they can glorify China like I said before. China loses another edge they would have had in the negotiations. Oh, what's that? The people are really against war now? And the exposed enemy of the people, the NWO and all its lackeys are really in favor of war? But I thought Trump was a Russian agent. They could have stopped the missiles but didn't? But still say the action violates international law? Whose international law is that? The NWO's UN international law? The same NWO whose controlled fake stream media is now trying to push the idea that Russian has a connection to this chemical attack? Who is on the fake stream media saying that? John McFucking nigger! A known Russian agent, NWO satanic globalist, and their UN representatives? So what's going to happen? What does this all mean? This. I just want to say that President Xi and all of his representatives have been really interesting to be with. I think we have made tremendous progress in our relationship with China. Um, my representatives have been meeting one-on-one -on -one with their counterparts from China, and it's uh, 
I think truly progress has been made. We'll be making a lot of uh, additional progress. The relationship developed by President Xi and myself, I think, is outstanding. We look forward to being together many times in the future. And I believe lots of very potentially bad problems will be going away. So I just want to thank President Xi for being with us in the United States. It's a tremendous honor for me and all of my representatives to host the President and his representatives. And again, progress has been made. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you catch that line? I believe lots of potentially very bad problems will be going away. China is the final boss, before getting to the secret final boss. The NWO promised them to be the leaders of the 1984 world they are still trying to create. They would eventually be double-crossed, ocelot style, but for right now, they are the epicenter of the last bastion of hope for the NWO to take control over the entire world. And they thought they were still just going to waltz in and get away with bending Trump to their will with ease. Now enter populist patriot Trump, whom China's top guy is at the mercy of right now, and Trump is making these statements about their meeting. This signals to me that Trump's plan is having its intended effect of de-escalating these games, while at the same time completely obliterating all the NWO narratives they have been trying to usurp his legitimacy as president with. Think of the situation in terms of a litmus test, much like the Brexit and Trump campaigns were that united populism against the enemies of the people, the NWO, and now we have this seemingly out of nowhere shock and awe for the world that puts it on another litmus test. See how ISIS and their backers bang the war drums for more bloodshed. I think it's a divining moment as to who the real enemies of humanity are here. Contrasted with everyone else saying, escalation needs to stop urgently, we need to work towards peace. Which consists of Trump, tonight I call on all civilized nations to join us in seeking to end the slaughter and bloodshed in Syria and also to end terrorism of all kinds and all types and his allies, among others. Who others? Why, none other than Xi Jinping, the president of China himself. Xi Jinping offered a nuanced reaction, saying it was urgent to avoid further deterioration of the situation. Urgent. Why so serious, China? Why such a sudden change in tone, China? Couldn't have anything to do with the fact that you're in the eagle's nest right now without any NWO protection, could it? Hmm? With this move that has zero bargaining cost to Trump, he miraculously managed to get both the United States and China to publicly state they both want the same thing, de-escalation. This is Trump's accomplishment. This is massive. This is mega. This may have been another world-saving move by Trump in the heat of the moment when it is needed to happen, not retroactively analyzed afterwards like we all have the pleasure of doing. So that's the gist of things. There's still more stuff that bears mentioning though. Russian bears, to be exact. So again, the strike did result in casualties, but warnings were given ahead of time so the area could be evacuated so no life needed to be lost. Life was lost from this strike, though, and that's because only 23 of the 59 missiles hit their targets. The rest reportedly went astray and ended up hitting some of the nearby civilian locations. This has Syrian girl partisan especially upset to the point where she declared, Which may result in World War III. I'm not even the one saying this. Trump is. That is the Trump before the deep state got to him. Well, some things about that. The United States, along with many other nations, has never stopped being a rogue state. People need reminding of this on a daily basis. But you're being fucking slow killed from global poisons all our nations are waging against life on this planet in the form of things like radiation and geoengineering. Recently, the leading cause of death in the UK became Alzheimer's and dementia. The second most technologically and medically advanced nation in the world's leading cause of death is now citizens going fucking insane and losing their memory? Are you kidding me? Am I the only one that sees a problem here? What's more, the deep state is still in charge of most of the United States government. We the people won one election to get one non-NWO shill into that government. Luckily, we were able to take back the single greatest seat of power the nation has from which Trump has been able to fight one hell of a fight against the globalists. As for the missiles, why? Why did they go astray? Well, here's the possibility. Russia has anti-air missile defenses in Syria, and it's confirmed that they were warned in advance of the strike that was targeting one airbase. 59 missiles is a lot for a single airbase. Could it be that the Russians decided to intervene in this strike and disrupt the missiles with jammers causing them to miss their target and hit civilians instead? 
If that were the case, then Trump would not be directly responsible for the loss of Syrian life. Or do you all honestly believe that Donald John Trump has suddenly taken a liking to bombing civilians?